Hi, everybody. Hey. Hope this meets everybody well. We are talking about diligence today. So, we will get started in a little bit. Oh, my hair look crazy for people who call in. So, let me. Okay, if you have a Twitter, you can share with people. Let them know we're starting. I see Ann is on. Auntie Diligent. Ann should be the one teaching this for real. Right? Briefly, I feel you, girl. You're always working. So, we will start. <laughs> You will start in a little bit. Um, I'm not very long-winded, so I don't know if we're going to be on here for a long time. But hopefully the message gets across. Am I blurry? Because I look really clear on my screen. But I just want to make sure I'm not blurry on, on y'all's screen. Hi, we will get started in a little bit. How's everyone's day? Okay, perfect. African King. Do I know you? What's your name? That's not African King. But yeah. Um we're gonna get started in a little bit. Oh hey Bob. <laughs> it shouldn't be too long. Um shout out to those people who are calling in. Let me look like a diligent worker. <laughs> right. But yeah, it'll be a fun time where we can talk about the word together. Um, so yeah, I pray that you guys are blessed. I know it was love, example. What was the A? I have the, I have the notes. The A was available, accessible, slash accountable. So yeah, let your people know to call in. Periscope looks so different for some reason. Okay, what time is it? So we're still gonna chill a little bit. We could pray. Anyone have a prayer point that they want to hear me pray for them and agree with them? Because we're two or three are gathered in their midst there he is. And we'll be touch and agree. So we're going to touch in the spirit. But if you have a prayer point or anything that you would like um, to be shared, go ahead and share that now. So we can talk. Oh, I said this before when I was teaching on Periscope the last time. It was like a month ago or two months ago. I said Periscope is like the weirdest thing because you feel like you're talking to yourself, but you're not. But that's still weird. It's still weird and everything. So, yeah. How's everyone? Hey, Faye Babs. Bab okay? All the way from Georgia. What's up? What's up, guys? We're going to get started. We can start. We can start, right? Y'all want to start? You can get started. Um, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, God, for everything that you have done in our lives. I thank you, God, that you speak to us even now, God. I pray that you will just minister to us that even though I may be speaking, Lord, that it will still be you, oh God, that, that speaks through me, Lord. I don't know 
half of everything about diligence, Lord, but you know, because you are the most diligent God. Um, and I just pray that you, oh God, um, will touch everyone's heart and plant a seed in their hearts, oh God, that causes them to leave your presence, oh God, different, that causes them to leave your presence with something to work on, to something to improve on. And we bless your name in Jesus name. Okay. I was told to stop playing with my hair. Okay. So, um, we're just going to get started. Of course, we're talking about um, diligence today. And when I think about diligence, I I want us to focus on it from the perspective of I may not be teaching anything new to you today. I may not even be giving you new information. But what I do want to challenge us as we start and as we talk about um, diligence tonight is that that's something that you didn't know before that you're able to apply it to yourself now. Um, so I just want you to remember that that it may not because I know a lot of times as we get older, um, as we know more about the Lord and know more about faith, we tend to not take notes. We tend to not, and I'm not, I'm not going on anybody. This is me as well. Um, so I know on Periscope, it may be hard, especially to take notes, especially when you're on your phone. So I'm just praying that you are ministered in some way. Um, and you're able to take at least one thing home that you're like, okay, this is something I work want, I want to work on. This is something that I want to let it become a core value. Let it be something that I pursue. Um, so diligence is one of those things that, you know, you can, you can definitely, a lot of people can gain or work on or be perfect in, but it's God who is meant to kind of supplement our diligence with his supernatural work and his supernatural actions in our lives. And when I say that, I'm saying it in the sense of God is the one who supplements and creates diligence in, into each and every one of us. And when we think about it, um, most of us here are familiar with the word, are familiar with definitions. So diligence is literally being able, being steadfast, being faithful. And when we know that um, that is a characteristic of God himself, he is the faithful God. He said that he would never leave us nor forsake us for God. So God is the epitome of um, diligence, like nothing compares to God and his ultimate and his all knowing power because he first was diligent with us. Um, so I first want to just point out to us that diligence is indeed a choice. Um, it is a choice that we all make internally saying like, I choose to be diligent. I choose to pursue God in this way. I choose that this is important to me. So uh, many times in Christianity, God has given us the choice to many things and diligence is one of those things that you have to choose and as we're going through this acronym of leadership you learned about love you learned about being an example you have learned about accountability availability accessibility you've learned about all of that thing so all of those things so what does diligence have to do with being a leader and honestly without diligence it's nearly impossible to to lead it's nearly impossible for god to really cultivate um leadership on the inside of you without including diligence because diligence is something that you learn in the trying times but it's also something that you learn before the trying times that allows you to move through the trying times um so while we're talking about diligence i'm one of the two main characters or the two main people because characters kind of sounds like it's fiction um but people the two main people that i want us to focus on or even look at um mainly would be one um, Jesus, of course, because Jesus was very diligent with us. And then second, of course, Job. Um, I love teaching from Job's perspective because I think Job was the epitome of diligence, faithfulness, faith, everything all wrapped in one. Um, and he was, he was just a man that we can learn a lot from. So when talking about Job, let's first turn our Bibles to Job 1. Um, and we're going to skip down because this is long and I have, um, my big Bible today. So it might take us a little while to get through everything. Um, so let's read from, I'm going to skip, I'm going to move around. So when you reread from Job one, uh, and well, let's read from five. And when the days of their feasting were over, Job sent for them to purify and hollow them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. So this is in, re in reference to 
um, his son. So if we read um, in chapter four, a little bit earlier, it says his sons used to go and feast in the house of, of each on his day, birthday in turn. And they invited their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of their feasting were over, Job sent for them to purify and hollow them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed or disowned God in their hearts. Thus did Job at all did just thus did Job at all such times. Now there was a day before we go into all of that. Um, so Job is a person. Let's think about it in modern day terms. Job has a big family. He has sons. I think he has four sons and three daughters. He has a couple. He has a, he has a big family. So in essence, he has his sons and then he has his daughters. Um, so after everyone's birthday, they will come together, feast, come together, feast, come together, feast. But Joe's family wasn't necessarily saved. He was the one that was saved in his, like in his household. And he was, you know, believing in God. So he would be the one that would constantly offer sacrifices for his children. Um, because he was like, well, I don't know if they believe. I don't know if they've cursed God in their hearts. I don't know if they disowned God in their hearts. So I'm going to offer this sacrifice for them, you know, that God may forgive them or God may have mercy upon them. So Job would do this diligently, diligently, diligently for his family. And he would find himself doing it consistently because he desired for them to be saved. And then when we see it, and that in, uh, that in and of itself is diligence in his life because we see that, wow, Job pursued after the Lord and Job wanted to see his family saved and he desired to see that trait, you know, lived out on the inside of them. And um, let's do for, let's go from 13. And there was a day... And there was a day when Job's sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house on his birthday. And there came a messenger to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them and the Sabians swooping down, down upon them and took away the animals. Indeed, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. So we see all that, we see all that, we see all that. So basically, Job loses everything that he is entitled. Like, he loses everything. His children, he loses his oxen, he loses his riches, he loses everything. And then when we jump down to verse 20... It says, then Job arose and rent his robe and shaved his head and fell upon the ground and worshiped and said, naked without possessions came I into this world from my mother's room and naked without possessions shall I depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed, praised and magnified and worshiped be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. And I think that last verse is something that we we have to really key on key into or really like analyze when it comes to diligence it says in all this job sinned not nor charged god foolishly being a leader being diligent is causes you to see something that not everyone can see when you are diligent and when god is really building that up on the inside of you you have to have a vision beyond what you see on this world you have to have a vision beyond what you see in this earth and when a lot of people ask you well you know how are you able to do this like why haven't you quit why haven't you left why haven't you done this why haven't you done that and then you just realize um that this is just that's not that is literally who god created me to be and it was funny i was talking to a leader a couple of days ago and they were asking I was asking them like you know not asking them but it, it was so encouraging to see how long they were steadfast with our ministry Bethel Campus Fellowship and to see that steadfastness was we were able to realize like wow you know you are able to be here you're able to contribute you're able to give how are you not burnt out how are you not tired how do you still do this and then they were basically saying like honestly it didn't even ever occur to us to think that we would leave BCF. Like that 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 thought was never something that processed in our mind. And I think that's important for us to notify note because when you realize that look, this is not even something that I'm considering. This is not something that I that I, I even comprehend in my mind. I realize diligence is not a choice in that moment, but diligence is a choice forever. Diligence is a choice that you have to make internally. And when you realize that it's a characteristic trait, yeah, a lot of people can say like, oh, that person is very diligent. But you also have to realize that diligence is something that is grown. Diligence is something that is cultivated. And how you cultivate it is through um, really believing in God in order to make things complete. And when I say that, um, I'm saying that to remember that willpower, you have to think about what God gave us in the beginning. God gave us the power of choice. 
God is the almighty God. God is the one that created the heavens and earth and the earth. If God wanted, he could make us in a way where we were forced to worship him, but he didn't. He gave us the choice to worship him because we don't realize that willpower is literally power. Willpower has power in it, but willpower is power. The 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 ability to choose, the able the ability to make a decision is what empowers that decision. So you have a choice. So let's say you have two choices between a writing utensil. You have a cloth marker and then you have a regular pen. And I'm saying like, hey, you choose. And then when you choose, you say, I want to use the pen or I want to use the cloth marker. You give power to that choice that you've given, that you've chosen. So basically when God has created us, he's given us the ability and the willpower to choose. So that's when life is de life and death is presented in front of us. And it says, okay, now you choose. And it even says life and death is on the power of the tongue. So when you, whenever we speak, we make that we, we are even cultivating that choice that we have. So when it's saying that you have this choice between life and death and you have to, you're presented with a choice, when you choose life, you ultimately empower that decision and you, you're actually able to use and, and, and cultivate and continue to um, use and apply this, this utensil. Now, if, when you think about that in the, in the realm of diligence, let's think about it. Diligence is a choice that you make internally. If I say like, look, I am deciding and I'm choosing to be diligent, then the Lord be glorified. The Lord is the one that finishes the work. He's not the one that, that starts it complete. I mean, he's not the one that um, just says, oh, you're forced to do this. You're forced to do that. But he's literally saying, no, I, by you saying, I choose to be diligent, it empowers God on the inside of you. Now, the reason why when you have to look at diligence as a choice is because different life opportunities will come your way. Many people will knock on your door and say, like, you should do this. You should do that. You should do this. You should do that. And that's why your diligence cannot be um, contingent on the decision of you wanting to do a specific thing. It can't be contingent on a job. Like, I'm diligent for this job. I am diligent for this ministry. I am diligent for this. I'm diligent for that. It can't be contingent on that. But what you have to realize is diligence is a character that is that's solely chosen by you. So you decide, like, I am a diligent person. Just like Job had decided prior to any adversary, prior to anything happen, he said that, it said this in the Bible, that he rent his garments. He literally tore his clothes. He shaved his head. He shaved his beard. He laid on the ground and he worshiped God in the midst of nothing so Job was literally saying he said naked I came into this world and naked I will go if it's the will of God so basically he was empowering the choice that I'm not choosing to just be diligent and, and offer offerings onto my children because I'm afraid that they'll sin I'm afraid of doing this I'm afraid of that but he's offering these offerings onto God because he was literally saying like I'm a diligent person I'm a diligent person to God and it says in all this Job sinned not nor not nor charged God foolishly so Job was even diligent in his faith towards God he was saying like look I'm choosing to serve God not because of any man I'm not choosing to serve God because of any ministry but I'm choosing to serve God because that is what I desire so what you really have to realize is that that choice to make that that choice to be diligent is really the will of God and when you are diligent and when you fall and you walk through it God blesses that and I really want you to just encourage everyone that hard times will come. Trying times will come. The times where you don't feel like doing something, you do feel like doing something, they will come. But having that diligence is what empowers you through those times. And praise God, um, when Ann contacted me, she was like, you know, I, I was, I'm praying, God, we need someone to teach on this thing. Um, would you be willing? And I was like, oh, sure, I don't have anything to say. But then she encouraged me. She said that... Um, when I thought of diligence, I thought of you because I feel as though you're a very, very diligent person. And that really spoke to me because I'm like, wow, what was it that she saw that that seemed to be diligent? You know what I'm trying to say? What was what was it that she saw that she was like, wow, you 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 appear to be diligent. And sorry if there's noise in my background. But and then when she said that, I realized, like, what is it? Because then you have to reflect on yourself because I, I want to preach from a or I want to teach or talk from a place of personal testimony. And. I haven't always been a diligent person, you know, I, I haven't always been a person that finishes things out or sticks with something, even in the rough times and the tough times. I'm actually a person that when things get too hard or when things get, you know, really, really down and there's just a lot going on, I'm the one who tends to be like, oh, deuces, I gotta go, you know, and I really just had to ask myself, 
at a certain point, I was like, is this the will of God for my life? Is this what God wants me to do? Does God want me to be a finisher or does God want to be a, me, me to be a person that con constantly lives in the realm of comfortability? And diligence is a place where you are sometimes uncomfortable. You are not doing what you always want to do. Like Job, you will be tried. You will be in places where I can't, I'm not able to finish. I'm not able to, I'm the finish line is there, but I'm ready to quit right now. But God is telling you, no, you have to run for it. No, you have to push for it. No, you have to finish. No, you have to. And it's not because of that situation, but it's literally the person he's created you to be. And when you think about that, you just have to really ask God, God, what is it that you've called me to be? What is it? How? Who am I that you are mindful of me? What is the characteristic that you're building on the inside of me? And diligence will take you through any anything in life. When I say that, diligence is what keeps you in ministry. Diligence is what keeps you in regards to um, being at in work, being at school. It's diligence that really keeps you because diligence. I feel like I've said that word a million times. Diligence is the, is the ability to see things that are not yet in fruition. And I know that is faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. So when you think of faith, think about it as diligence and faith go hand in hand. It is almost impossible to be diligent if you don't have faith. And the reason why I say that is because diligence is the one that Faith is the one that propels your diligence. Like, I may not see it right now. I may not even see, like, is character, I'm, I sidetracked, but is character something that you can touch? Is character something real? Is character this pen? No. Character is something that's on the inside of you. Character is what you're building up internally. So because character is not something that you can touch, you have to ask yourself, I have to have the evidence, I have to have that faith that this character is actually being built up in me. And that in and of itself is diligence. Understanding that, wow, God is really doing something in, me, in my life. God is really completing the work. But if you say that, nope, you know, I'm choosing, I don't see it. I don't see it coming. I'm tired. There's too much going on. There's too much stress. Then you're not going to be able to finish that race that God has called you to. And I really want you to know that diligence is something that you have to choose in your quiet time. And because when you think about that, if you don't choose diligence in your quiet time, I think that is the number one way because we're talking about leadership. That is the number one way to burn out without a doubt. Burnout comes easy when there is no diligence and you have to realize that I'm not diligent for a person I'm not diligent for a ministry I'm diligent because it's God who who's created this on the inside of me and the reason why I say that because think about it like this right if turmoil comes within a ministry and you don't feel as though like man am I here am I doing is this what I'm supposed to be doing am I am I walking in God am I doing the right thing and that causes you to fall away you have to really ask yourself is that the will of God was that what God wanted me to do because a lot of times I know we all because I'm talking I think it's about four people on here when we all are I had no Christians. We know Christians who were Christians once before. We know Christians who were, you know, have done, have seen everything. And literally they don't go to church and they don't believe in God anymore. And you ask them why. And it's always a complication. There's always a conflict. There's always something that pushed them away. And you really have to make a decision. And this is what I tell every new believer. And of course, for leaders, the same as well. You have to make that choice right now. You can't make that choice tomorrow. You can't make it three years from now, two years from now, one year from now. You have to make the choice now because something will come and will challenge you. And that is not a maybe, that is not an if, that is not, oh, maybe, I don't know what's going on. No, it will come. But if you don't choose diligence before it comes, then you won't ever be prepared. You won't ever be ready for that. So that's why that's why you have to really ask yourself, God, God, what is it? And what, what, how are you calling me to be diligent? And why do I have to make this choice? And it's really because he wants to see his vision. He wants to see everything fulfilled. And when you look at BCF, let's use BCF for example, right? For example, let's say that, oh, I'm joining BCF, I love BCF, you know, BCF is cool, da da da, da. I like the minute mission, bringing students to Christ, da 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 and that's what I like to do. But if you don't see the mission and the vision of BCF, if you simply see it as, oh, this is BCF's thing, then you'll never be able to run for it, you'll never be able to follow after it, you'll never, you'll never be able to pursue that same vision in, other, in your own life whenever you're not around BCF. And the reason why I say that is because that means you're only doing it, you're not doing it from a place of diligence, you're not doing it from a place of character, you're really, you're actually doing it as a place of works. You're doing things that work. You're giving BCF your work. You're giving BCF your actions. But if that doesn't produce anything on the inside of you, you burn out. 
you simply burn out because you're not doing it for any you're simply doing it for another person you're doing it for man and that's why you have to realize every vision and every ministry that you're connected to has a calling for you personally and when you read it in, in the great commission it says go you there go you therefore and make disciples so bcf is not doing something that is apart from the vision of god and when you realize that it causes you and it's like wow i'm, I'm fulfilling my i'm fulfilling my god-given purpose which was given to me in the great commission being a part of bcf and i know that if i'm not connected to it like how would i be able to continue to fulfill that vision and that's not for everybody i understand that but i'm just speaking from a place of ministry since we're talking about leadership and when you're doing that you have to realize that while i may be serving in this ministry while i am a leader in this ministry i'm not only doing it for this ministry you know i'm doing this because i have been called by god to do this and that's what diligence is like everywhere i go i am doing the mission of god and i'm i'm choosing to be i'm choosing to be diligent in every area of my life so it's not saying like oh i'm diligent at ministry but don't catch me at home I'm diligent um, at home but don't catch me at work you know diligence like I said is characteristic it's a character that's on the inside of you so you can't just keep switching it on and off because that's not a character then that is an action that you're just doing and you're appearing diligent but character is the what is causing you to be character is essentially um, a part of who you are. So everywhere you go, you you send you you spread those seeds. Everywhere you go, you really release that on the inside of you. So it's something that you really have to to see even on your own. And when I say that, it's really about understanding faith and just having that complete faith that Lord, I may not know everything now, but I trust in you to know everything. You are the finisher. You're the the author and the finisher of my faith, meaning that you completed everything and you finished everything. Um, and I, to talk about Jesus, cause we talked about Job a little bit. Um, and we talked about how in everything Job sinned not and he didn't, and he didn't, um, falsely, or he didn't charge God falsely, meaning that he chose God prior. And, I, and when we think about that, let's think about, um, Paul's letter to Timothy, who told us to be ready in see and be ready in season and out of season. And you have to think about that out of season time. You really have to think about that because when you're out of season and when you're maybe not in season, you should be cultivating that same desire of of diligence. You're cultivating that same thing on the inside of you. But as long as you're not cultivating it out of season, when it comes to in season, you're not prepared. So that's why you have to be round the clock. And that goes back to character and not being just something that you do right now, but it being something that you're producing or you're trying to see in your lifetime long term. And when we see the life of Jesus, um, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, it got tough. It got heated. It was like crazy. Like Jesus was like, there's so much going on. And, and even Jesus was so like weighed down, pressed down by the calling and what he was called to do that he even said like, Father, if you could take this cup from me go ahead and take it you know and, and that, that's just to paraphrase um but when you when you read the story of the gar of jesus in the garden of gethsemane you see that it was so he was so much burdened with what was going on you know with what the what he was called to do but he did not choose to fulfill the will of god right then and there because then that would have just he would have just been like okay i gotta go you know but jesus chose to fulfill the walk the, the um the will of god even before that and that's what diligence, because diligence will carry you through adversity. Diligence will carry you through turmoil. It will carry, carry you through um, hard times. But if you're just trying to cultivate that even after the fact, when you're in the midst and you're th in the thick of the storm, then it's a little a little too late because it's harder in that time so jesus was saying like you know there's a lot going on i'm pressed on i'm pressed down from every side god if this is if this is if you could take this cup away from me please do but then he said not that nevertheless not my will but your will and that's where it comes from choice that's why diligence is a choice so God, Jesus was saying in that time that it was not his choice that he would glorify, but it's literally the will of God that he was going to glorify. And that is what diligence is. And that's just when we see it in the story of Job, we see that no matter the situation, no matter how bad it got, Job still worshiped God. And even Jesus, when he was down, when he was pressed, when he was tired, he still chose the will of God. And he is the he is literally the one that that shows us what diligence looks like in action. When someone goes and dies on a cross, when someone is beaten, flogged, and and done everything and mocked, still he chose Jesus, he chose Jesus Christ. So that's just something when we're asking about leadership. 
and we're asking ourselves, okay, what does this mean? How do I fulfill this? You really have to go back and look in the Bible for those that, you know, have done the same thing, who are those who are, you know, still pursuing the Lord in, in many respects of life. So honestly, I don't have um, that much left because I didn't, I don't, I don't really, I feel like the point of what God is saying is, is coming together. But I do just want us to realize that when when we're choosing diligence and when we're choosing the will of God, you have to realize that diligence is something that is needed in order to be a leader. It is something that without leadership, without diligence, it's like almost impossible to continue to walk this walk um, within leadership. And, you know, we've done love because love is the foundation of everything. We've done being an example because as a leader, that's what you're called to do. You're called to be an example. And then as a leader, you're called to be accessible. You're called to be doing this. But then also as a leader, you're called to be diligent. And then we see that also in Jesus' life when he said that he would leave the 99 and go after that one. He would leave those 99 just to simply chase after that one. And that heart of diligence, that heart of pursuit, that heart of the more is what we really have to, to really have to let to die on the inside of us. Cause I'm going to talk as in talk from the, from the position that we're all leaders here and we're all leading somebody. Even if it's only one person we're we're being leaders or we're, we're, we're leading in our lives. And when you know that, when you think about that and you say like, look, I am a leader. You have to realize that you're not only diligent and you're not only a leader for yourself, but you're a leader for those around you, you know? And when you think about that, you have to say like, look, God, my life is not my own and I lay my I lay down my life for you to take hold of it and for you to use me. And when we you and when we realize that we see that the calling of God upon our lives, the calling that we're called to is much more much more bigger than ourselves. So you have to say like, look God, I'm not going to be a leader that falls away. And I think that that's something that is a personal conviction even in myself because when I think about it, sorry. When I think about it, think about it in this sense, right? Jesus has called you to be a leader. Jesus has called you to do all these things. And if you're a leader and you're growing and you're and you're following after God and you have people following you. Let's say for example, you have two people following you. This is why being diligent is very important. And you say like, look, I'm burnt out. The church did me wrong. I don't like this person. I don't like that person. And you decide to fall away. God forbid those two people that were following after you, of course, it's the grace of God. This doesn't have to happen or this does not have to apply. But those two people who were following after you, who were, you were meant to be their diligent leader, are now without someone who they were following because you were the leader and they had, you had two followers, you know? So you really have to look at it from that perspective. I'm not only diligent for myself. Yes, I'm diligent because that's the characteristic that God is building up on the inside of me. But then God has also used me to save other people. He's used me to lead other people. And by that default, that should motivate me to go and cultivate diligence. You know, it should motivate me to go and learn more. It should motivate me to go and do more. Because even though we may do things out in the open where it looks as though like we're diligent, it looks as though like, this is going well, this is going well. But if I'm not diligent even in my own house, I'm not diligent even behind the behind closed door, then it becomes difficult. We have to realize that God is literally calling us to this life of of, of diligence. He's literally calling us to say like, look, you know, you have to live this selfless life. And that's what love is about. Love is about sacrifice. Love is about living that life of selflessness and saying, look, I'm not going to just choose what makes me comfortable, but Lord, I'm going to choose your will. And in order to consistent, consistently choose the will of God, we have to go and say like, look, God, I'm laying my life down so that you may use me. And practically, diligence is not easy. When times get rough and times get hard and you're like, Lord, do I really have to go through this? You have to remember the word that, that God gave you originally. And that's what I usually do. Um, whenever times get really rough or times are like, God, what's going on? I need to be diligent in this. I let myself be reminded of what he told me. And that 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 focus and that faith, like we talked about how faith and diligence goes hand in hand, that focus on the promise that he's given me is what motivates me, is what pushes me. And saying like, look, Lord, I know that you've given me something. I know you've given me um a vision for your will. I know that you've given me a promise and because I know that I will pursue and follow after you. And if you're a person where you're like, look, I don't even know what the will is calling, what God is calling me to. I don't know what's going on. Then go back and seek him. When you seek him, he will, he will speak and he will reveal to you. And when he speaks and reveals the, and reveals things to you, he's not only saying it for his own good, but it's something for you to hold on to. And one of those things, and it doesn't have to be 
super mystical or super cool or super spiritual. No, sometimes it can simply be the word that he's giving you in the Bible. That's why it's important for us to read our Bible because then we know what the Lord is saying. So if the Lord is saying that um, he's given us abundance and he's given us an expected end he's given us love and he's given all us all these things when you know and he's giving you that knowledge you hold on to that and you say like look i know the scripture says this that's the same thing reminding god of his promises when you say i know the scripture says this and i will follow after that so when you hold on to that promise that the Lord has given you to you, you say like, look, Lord, Lord, I'm reminding you of your promise and I am holding on to it and I'm push, I'm pushing and I'm pursuing after you. And that's the, that's the joy of being where we are. It may not be easy. It, it's not easy all the time. But even still, he motivates us by the promises that he's given us. And I, I once heard a... Um, uh, quote, I say this a lot. Sometimes things become a discipline before, before they become a delight. So... Maybe it's reading your word. Maybe it's praying. Sometimes it, it will be a task. Maybe it will feel like I don't want to do this. But soon enough, as you continue to consistently do it, it becomes a delight. And let's use that in the simplest of terms when we're talking about, let's say, oatmeal. Let's say I don't like oatmeal at all. I like oatmeal. But let's say I don't like oatmeal, but I'm forced to eat it daily. By the time it comes to the third week, the second week, I'm going to look forward to that meal of, of oatmeal simply because it's warm. I see the benefits in it. I see, I, I, I'm, I grow to see why it's beneficial for me, you know, and I see it beyond what I first initially saw it for. So that's what we have to really realize that sometimes things become a discipline before they become a delight. And being diligent is it's a characteristic that you have to work for. You know, it's something that you have to really seek the Lord for and pray and say like, Lord, I pray to be diligent. Lord, I pray that you trust me. And then we see that in the parable of the talents where it says one was given five, one was given three or two, one of them. And the last one was given one. And then they, the first two, they went back and they even invested what they had and they made more. And then the one was like, okay, I'm scared. I'm going to dig it in the ground, you know, bury it. And then I'm going to see you later. But then you have to realize that it's something that you have to cultivate. So even those that, that have the five, they have the three, and then they were given more. The Lord was, seen, was able to see their faithfulness, to see their diligence with the one that they were given. But it's the one that doesn't do anything with what they have. He said that much more will be taken from you. Isn't that crazy that even what you have and what you what you may may or may not have, even that much more is taken from you. So as a leader, you have to realize that what you're given in this season right now is for you to be faithful with, it's for you to cultivate, it's for you to lift up and say like, look, this is beneficial. Look, this is blessing me. Look, I'm gaining and learning so much from this. But if you don't even appreciate or if you don't see or if you're not, not let me say, not say appreciate for the lack of better words, but if you're not cultivating or if you're not being um intentional with what the lord has given you now it says that even that much more will be taken from you and i'm telling you it's not about appearances because you can look good on the outside but it's really about what you're doing on behind the scenes so if i have a ministry am i praying am i seeking god for them am i am i doing these things am i am i reading my word and it's not for anybody but it's literally for yourself because diligence is what is going to show when you're on the outside. But it's not something that is just going to going to show when you're when you're doing this and doing that and it looks good. It sounds good. No, it's something that you actually have to cultivate internally beyond, beyond, when no one is even there, when no one is even looking at you. So that's important to remember. And I want to just remember, want, want to remind us that even God said that um, he's not a he's not a man that should lie. And, and when we think about that, God is the one who I said Jesus is the, the epitome of um, diligence. Of course, Jesus and God, one and one. Um, but when you think about it, God was first diligent with us, you know, and God is diligent with his promises. And I think that is the most comforting thing to hear because faith with diligence will propel you and cause you to believe things that you not you never once believed. And the reason why I say that, let's take Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. If you guys have your Bibles, you can turn there really quickly. this big bible so it takes me longer all right let's look at jeremiah 29 and i'm going to go to another scripture after this is like one of my favorite scriptures jeremiah 29 it says for i know the thoughts that i think towards you saith the lord thoughts of peace and not and not evil to give you an expected end so if all you do is believe in the promises of God and you have faith towards the promises of God, the Lord will cause, will, 
we will cause that promise to be a blessing upon you. If, if that's all I believe, like, look, Lord, I'm diligent with this. I know that I know that I know it may not be any reward for man. It not be may not be any reward from a school. It may not be any reward from a job. But I know that the Lord said that he would give me an expected end. And when you hold on to that, it cause it's just like it's something that says like it motivates you on the inside. Like, I'm not doing this for you. I'm not doing it for the next person. I'm doing it because my God told me to do it. And I know a really, really practical example is tithes. Uh, because tithes is like one of those topics that people like are like, eh, eh, I don't know how to feel. But I'm a person that in the beginning I was like, mm -mm, I got to I don't got that much money, Lord, and I know you understand, and I can't afford it, you know, and I would just say all these things to myself, but the Lord is literally, when, when someone taught on tithes, they literally taught it from the perspective of tithing is not for God, it's literally for you, and when you think about that, it it is for, it's it's not even about what you know what God is like oh God is God is God is going to do something for me God is going to be happy that I gave my tithes today da, 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 da. no it's literally for you it's learning not only and I want to tell us that it's not only about tithing our money but it says in Proverbs is saying give God the best of everything that you have so meaning if you are the best administrator then you're tithing ten percent of that. I don't know. That's not practical because we don't know. But if you are the best administrator, right? Everyone thinks that that's a gift that you have. Then you're giving that best part of your gift and you're giving it up, up onto God. You know, when we think about our money, we're giving that money onto God. Not for, not to see, oh, like, God, I know you're going to do this. God, I know you're going to do that. But it's literally God has rewarded me. And I'm going to invest that not only... In, in the things that I see in this world, but I'm going to invest that in the destiny that he's given upon me and given all to me. Then with that being said, when we think about Jeremiah 29, 11, being diligent will cause the promises of God to come, not to come easy because I don't want to speak in that way, but it will cause you to believe the promises of God. And by believing fully and completely in the promises of God, it, it literally causes them to manifest in your life. But you're like, oh, I don't know if he has an expected end. I don't know if he has thoughts of peace towards me. I don't know if God even likes me. If you have thoughts like that, you're constantly, you're like that person with the one talent. You're too afraid. So you're going to dig it in the ground and you're going to cover it up. And when he comes back and asks for it, you got it. But you have to realize that it's not only about that. You have to seek God and you have to see that I'm going to I'm going to trust that the Lord says that when I invest in this is going to much more is going to come back to me. And even the one that I have, you know, I'm going to continue to sow it back onto him, but I'm not going to hide it because of my fear and say like, look, I'm not doing this. I'm afraid. But Lord, the Lord literally says that he will give you an expected end meaning he has thoughts of peace towards you talk thoughts of good God's thoughts of that he just he's like i i fully love you and then we also know that it says that god is not a son of man that he should lie so when we know this that when we know those two main things when god promises us promises us and he speaks to us you have to literally say like look lord i trust in your promise i trust in what you've given me i trust in what you've spoken before and we're going to end soon, but let's turn to Philippians. And that's the, like the last thing um, that we're going to talk about. So being a leader is about being diligent in every respect of life. And I said I'm not very long-winded, so once we share this last thing, we, we'll be able to go. But flip to Philippians 4. And everyone's like, you're reading Philippians 4, 13. I'm reading Philippians 4, 11. And it says, not that I am implying, um, I don't know if you guys are kind of there. Yeah. Not that I'm implying that I was in any personal want, for I have learned how to be content, satisfied, to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I am. I know how to be abased and live humbly in straight in, in straight in circumstances, and I know also how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I have learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation, whether well fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare or going without and being in want. Literally, this is a definition of diligence. Like this little piece right here, 411, that is diligence. Like, I don't even have to say anything anymore. Paul is literally saying that I know in whatever situation, I know how to be content in what the Lord has called and given me to do. And then in the next verse, of course, Philippians 413, we know that this, I have strength to do all things. So the Lord has supplied you and given you the strength to do all things. But before that, he's literally saying that I know how to go through any and every situation. I know how to live 
abundantly. I know how to be amongst the rich folks and be happy and be merry and not even care about what the price tag says. And then he says, but I also learned how to live humbly. I, le I learned how to, I know how that even when I'm in the place of want, how to be, not to be disturbed or disquieted. So when we see Paul says that, he's literally saying like, look, no matter what situation comes, I have all strength that the Lord has given me. It says that in verse 13, again, it says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. So you have to realize that diligence is something that the Lord, that you make the choice of, but it's what the Lord empowers you. The Lord is not leaving you out to dry. He's not leaving you alone. He's not leaving you to do anything, but he's saying, look, I'm here with you. I'm here with you. And when you realize that conquering the world becomes easy. So we can all conquer the world together. So you just really have to realize that. Remember, if you didn't take anything away, Philippians 4.11 is the definition of diligence. And I want to read it one more time. And this is like one of my, if not my favorite verses. It's not, it's one of, one of my favorite verses. It says, not that I'm implying, implying that I was in any personal want, for I have learned how to be content. Satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I am. I know how to be abased and live humbly in strange circumstances. And I know how also how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I have learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare or going without and being in want. He's literally learned he said, I've learned to be content in all circumstances. And as leaders, because we're going to round up and just close this out because we're all leaders here. As a leader, you have to realize that your leadership is not contingent on a person. It's not contingent on a ministry. It's not contingent on your parents. It's not contingent whether or not you have money or don't have money. Leadership and the call that God has given you is literally be because of the grace of God and he's caused that and he's growing that on the inside of you so you have to realize that this diligence you're not doing it for any man you can't do it for the accolades you can't do it for the round of applause and the and the and the and the two you know everyone gives you two cents and oh you're a great person doing it for the compliments you will burn out literally burn out but the Lord is saying that he has caused you to be diligent because that's what he wants for you you know, and I'm, I'm diligent to the Lord. And when the Lord gives you, when, a, when it's a characteristic on the inside of you, burning out is not a thing. Burning out is not like, oh, this, this is going on. This is going on. I just can't do it anymore. I'm not even going to be a Christian anymore. That is like the most bizarre thing to me. Because it's like, look, you weren't saved to do all these things. You were saved because you believed in Jesus Christ. And you have to realize that that is our foundation. That's why we're diligent. We're diligent to our faith. We're diligent to our love for Christ first. And he's the one who empowers us to do, to do ministry and to do leadership and to do all these added things. But still first, we're diligent to the Lord first. And when we cultivate that in our quiet time, choosing God even on the outside, choosing God when it's hard becomes easy. And we see that in Job. Remember, we read about Job when he lost his whole family. He lost everything. We saw that in Job's life because he chose God even before then. And then we saw that with Jesus. That even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when this cup was when it was too much for him, he literally said, "Like, look, Lord, not my will, but Your will." Amen. Um, hallelujah. So that's all everything that I have um, to share today. I pray that you guys are blessed. You know, you if you want to focus, if you want to be a more diligent leader, definitely go and study Job. Definitely go and study Jesus because we all study Jesus and definitely look at Philippians 411. It will minister to you because you'll realize like, look, I'm learning how to be content. I'm learning how to be, realize that this is beyond me, that this, what I'm called to is bigger than myself. And then it causes you to have faith to believe in the promises of God. So we covered a lot. But if you have any questions, you can text me, message this thing or hit up Ann or anything. So, yeah. Let's pray, and, and then we'll close out, and if anyone has anything to share or text or type, just let me know. So, Heavenly Father, I just bless your name, and I thank you, God, for what you're doing in our lives. I thank you, God, that you minister to us even now and, and before time. Lord, I pray that even still, God, that you will cause us to be diligent in our private time, that it's not about looking good, it's not about doing the right thing, Lord, but it's about you, God. And I just pray that you will teach each person, even on their own, oh, God, what that means, Lord. And I pray that even the same revelation that you've given unto me, the Lord, you would give unto others, Lord. I pray that burning out would not be a thing for these ones, Lord. I pray that your ministry 
ministry, oh God, will continue to go forth, Lord, and you will real and they will realize, oh God, that you've called them to something much more bigger, Lord. These are the faithful or everyone else, but I pray that you would just call us to be faithful, God, and trust us with more, oh God, that we may be diligent with what you have given us, Lord. And I bless your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Bye, you guys.